So, in, interestingly, during dog fights, the rate of turn is not important. But now I'll show you sustained turn. Okay. So now you see the difference. So you see that's why you want to be behind and above. Instantaneous turn to avoid. Sometimes Hollywood teaches you more aeronautics than in the classroom. Hmm. So here for example, I could see that the speed came down, speed reduced. So during air shows, you see a lot of instantaneous turns when you are trying to impress the audience about the capability. But it is important for you to be able to maintain it. It's only for show purpose. Uh, the real uh, capability is only when you are able to maintain that particular turn rate and uh, height as well as velocity. Okay, so some students have sent me a message saying, "Can we compare some aircraft uh, which we have along with the ones that our enemies have?" So this is a good example. We will look at the turning performance of these two aircraft. So what do you think? Offhand, what do you think? As far as turning performance is concerned, do you think our aircraft Tejas is better than F-16? <clears throat> Let us see the numbers, okay. We cannot just go by emotions, okay. Just because it is made in India, you cannot say it should be better. Let us see the numbers. So, here are the two aircraft, okay. Let us see. So, here is the graph. Now, the source of this graph is not a very authentic source, so therefore, I do not want to say that this is perfectly correct. I have not confirmed these numbers, I do not have the data with me. But if you look at the graph, there are two types of F-16 aircraft. There is the uh, F-16AB, which is the previous generation of F-16 and then there is F-16C and D, which are the modified version. So obviously, the ones which are modified are slightly better, they are more capable. So the orange, the orange or the yellow line that you see, the dark line is for the F-16 CD turn rate. So this is the modified F-16. The blue line that you see is for the LCA and the red line is for the previous version of F-16 that is F-16 AB. So what do we notice? We notice that if you look at Mach numbers up to approximately 0 0.65, 0 0.65 mark number, the blue line is above the red line. So that means the blue line is having a higher values of uh, turn rate or higher values of G compared to the red one. Below 0 0.6, the F-16 AB seems to be better, having an advantage. But compared to F-16 C and D, we are consistently better at all Mach numbers right from 0.3 to 1, F-16 is inferior compared to Tejas. This is for the sea level sustained horizontal turn at empty weight and no afterburner. Now on the right hand side you have a scale that shows you the turn rate. So, read that axis when you are looking at the dark line. The dotted line shows for the G is pulled. That you should see on the left hand side. So, you can notice that the place where we become superior, the G is pulled are much higher. We are able to pull approximately 6 G at Mach number 1 as compared to only 4.8 or 5. All right. So, 
the parameters of the aircraft that make a big difference are wing loading. So, we have a lower wing loading 247 kg per meter square as compared to 431 for F16C. So, lesser the wing loading, higher is the instantaneous turn rate. So, as far as ITR is concerned, which gives you the initial advantage of getting into a dogfight, we are far superior. In fact, our wing loading is almost double, almost half. Okay. Let us look at now the sustained horizontal turn rate. This is more important, right? Sustained turn rate. So, for sustained turn rate, we have some data, F16A, we have some data. In that data, we are seeing the turn rate versus the Mach number. And the same data which we saw last time, we just superimposed there. So, the LCA outperforms F16 AB at high Mach numbers beyond 0.65 and all Mach numbers for F16 C and D. So, thrust to weight ratio is better for F16, slightly better, but that does not, that is not the whole story. So, the sustained turn rate of F16 is more than Tejas at lower Mach numbers. But beyond 0.65 Mach numbers, our aircraft dominates. And interestingly, most dogfights take place only at Mach numbers beyond 0.65, approximately at transonic Mach numbers normally. So, at Mach number less than 0.65, both are equal, roughly equal. Above that, our aircraft is far superior. But remember one thing, you cannot take this and say therefore, it will always win. Because winning in a war or winning in a combat is a function of pilot skill. It is a function of the initial positions and also on the actual aircraft specs. So, if you look purely from the aircraft point of view, if you remove the pilot from the equation and if you remove some advantages which may be there because of the initial engagement, then our aircraft is superior. See, it all depends now. If our pilots are also superior, then they have a superior aircraft with better skills, they will always win. Okay. The last thing that we discuss about turning flight is turning in a vertical plane. Now, in the vertical plane, Basically, it is only for not for transports, okay. it is meant only for aerobatic and commuter aircraft and also they also only when they indulge in some maneuvers. So, let us see some maneuvers. This is a vertical climb. Almost vertical, perfectly vertical, in fact now inverted. So, it is only for these kind of situations that we are going to now look at vertical flight. And obviously, during takeoff and landing, you need to do this. Every aircraft does it, although not so dramatically, but you need to actually go into a vertical plane turn when you go for a takeoff. So, there are many positions which the aircraft can be. Let us say in the bottom of the turn, you will have thrust in the forward direction, weight below, lift up. So, in this T will be equal to D because you are horizontal, but lift will be equal to weight. Okay. Lift minus W, sorry. So, the excess lift L minus W will be equal to the force required to go into a vertical path that is W V square by G R. When you move to this condition, now your nose is pointing vertically upwards. So, now thrust will be equal to weight if you want to go vertically up, but you are into a turn. So, there is a lift force which is trying to make you go inside the circle. So, here T minus D will be equal to W and L will be equal to W V square by G R. Here now you are inverted. So, 
again horizontal so t equal to d so t minus d equal to 0 but l plus w both will give you the acceleration and therefore you come inside so now if this is the case what happens at the final position or in the what is called as a 3 o'clock position so here the t minus d plus w is 0 which means t plus w thrust and weight equal to drag and lift will be equal to the centrifugal force. So you can see the lift keeps on changing, the thrust keeps on changing. So to, to fly in this particular condition continuously at a constant speed is not very easy. You need a coordination between the throttle and also the control surfaces. Okay. So in general, if there is an angle, you can use this formula for angle. So cos gamma will go from 0 to 360. Okay. So what is a pull-up maneuver? Pull-up maneuver basically is a maneuver in which you pull yourself up from a horizontal flight. Okay, so you are on a curved path and your altitude is continuously increasing from the horizontal you are going towards that side. Okay. So the forces can be balanced, the force acting would be lift minus weight and that will be equal to mv square by r, it is like the turning flight. So the same formulae only thing is the plane has now changed from horizontal to vertical. The formulae are the same. If you replace the aircraft with a point mass, whether you draw a circle like this or you draw a circle like this, it is the same. Okay. So let us see one more short video about a dive pullout. This is a pull out. Although this is inclined, so it is not a normal pull out, it is inclined pull out. So dive pull out is a part of descending flight. So the angle of attack is going to decrease and the speed is going to increase because they are related you know. 